Okay, got it. There you go. All right, thank you. Mm-hmm, thank you. Hi, I'm Lady Ophelia, and I hail from the Barony of Mamron. Um, I just gave you a little disclaimer. I have the four-year-old <laughs> and grandson, and he's in my room right now. So um, I'm trying to get him to be quiet. So he's as quiet as he probably can be right now. But if you hear noise, that's what it is. Um, thank you for um, joining us tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I am by no means the expert on Kumihimo, but um, when, as I, as COVID pandemic started being more prevalent in Oklahoma, um, and we all started, you know, having to stay home, um, and at that same time, I stepped down from being the hospitaler for the Barony of Namron, I was finally like, what can I do? And so um, someone taught me Kumihimo and I, it just took off. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite thing. It relaxes me. Um, and I have really just um, flourished in it. So one of the things that <clears throat> when I was trying to make things, I was like, well, how can I turn this into something fruitful? Just, I can make all the different braids and give them the friends, but how can I make it the most fruitful? Like what, what can I get out of it? Or what can I do to us for service? So I asked some questions and started, uh, <clears throat> I originally asked um, our Baron and Baronova of, of uh, Namron if it was possible, if they would be interested in using the Kumihimo braid for their torsade, which is their service award. And so they, they said they'd get back to me and they wanted to ask around. And they finally, about three weeks later, they contacted me and said, absolutely. Um, they would love to use it and have some diversity. And when they give out an award and they have that regalia, so they, they said they would like me to, um, create some. And so I, what I did was I just started looking at the patterns and I have some here, I'm going to show you. Um, I just started looking at the patterns and I came up with some different versions, but they're all pretty much the same. So um, for the Barony of Namron, the torsade, every color represents uh, a past Baroness, is that correct? And um, so these are the colors as like yellow, purple, uh, white, red, black, and blue for the torsade. But unfortunately the way I had to do it was it, I had to figure out the best way that I can actually create this braid because the colors when I make the braid are kind of, they're not even. So it's not the even number. So I had to kind of work it out. But what I did was I just played with it a little bit. And I think my best version is probably um, this one and I'll hold it up if you can see it. Is that too blurry? Okay. Um, but I made them in different sizes. So depending on the, you know, what someone you know prefers they can have a smaller one they can have a medium one or a larger one but this this i love them and so that's something that you can probably do for you know service awards in your barony you just have to kind of look um and see and i'm going to share my screen real quick and make sure i'm on the right one okay can you see that can you see the my screen now okay so then this is the torsade with the different colors and it, um, I, I was wrong. It's the past Baron and Baronesses is what the torsade represents. And then um, the next one that I thought, well, if I can do the torsade, what is something else I can do? And I looked and I said, well, how about the Argent Fleur of Namron, which is the Arts and Science Award. Um, and so I played around with it a little bit and I kind of wanted to stick around with the way the pattern was. And the best I could come up with was this one. And so um, this is actually for, can you, I'm sorry, can you see it? I can't see my screen now. Can you see that? I can actually probably hold it up here. Uh, that's what, I can't get the green screen off. I don't know why, I'm sorry. And I made a smaller version. <clears throat> and then of course, if someone else, they wanted this version, they can have this version here. But, um, so I actually have a couple of people that were just recently, um, friends that were just recently uh, 
awarded the Argent Floor, so these are for them. And they will, I waited until this class, I had promised it to them and then we had COVID. And then I waited for this class because I was asked to do it. And I was like, well, I'll wait to hand that out. Um, but anyway, uh, those are just a couple of the, the actual um, ones that I have done for just my barony and they'll be handed out and I'll make several of the um, torsades. And um, I am trying, how do I do it? Um, what are you trying to oh, do? I'm trying to get off share screen and I cannot figure it out now. At the bottom, you should be able to hit. Uh, no, 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 sorry. There should be a little row at the top and you should be able, it should say stop screen share. It might be on another monitor if you have another monitor. Hmm. Okay. Have like view options. I apologize. I'm. You're fine. Totally understand. And is not allowing me to do it. That is so bizarre. Let me see if I can pull it. There you go. Okay, sorry about that. Actually, I just had to close the window. It wouldn't, it wouldn't let me do it otherwise. Um, but I do have, um, the next one is someone um, in the kingdom had, had seen me post a couple of the, um, the ones I have made for the kingdom. And they, uh, I had made it one or two and I was just experimenting and I posted it and they contacted me and they said, you know, we really need, we could really use you to make some of these awards. Are you interested in doing it? Are you making the regalia? And I said, absolutely. How do I do it? Like, what do you want me to do? And so I, the fun thing about this is that um, she said, no, just do, make sure you match the colors that of what, you know, of the actual award and you can play around with it and have fun. So that's exactly what I did. Um, so these are actually have been waiting to be given out um, to, I was going to drop them off at Her Majesty's house, but I hadn't had a chance yet because of COVID. And then, um, then I was asked to do this class. So I held on to them for a few more, <laughs> few more days and then I'll drop them off. But um, so what I did was I just played around with some different patterns and I'm really hoping that you can see it because my blue screen will not come off. But I just did different designs, um, played around with them. So this one is, and make sure I get the name right. This is the Sable Sparrow of Anstiora, is that correct? And I just did different ones. So it can kind of just basically, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm on the phone. I'm not, I have a meeting. One second, please. My, I have one second. I apologize. You're fine. No problem. I'm so sorry. It doesn't matter. She just burst marches in. <laughs> She's 12. <laughs> um, Not a problem. Um, and so I don't know if you can get back to showing you. But anyway, these are just some of the other designs I made. And you can make them from any material. Um, I really like using satin ratchel cord. Those are, so those are those that I made. And you can, in any design, and I... <clears throat> And I'm pretty sure everyone here is probably that our tenant is tending has either done Kumihimo or wants to learn. Um, I love it. It's so much fun for me. Um, and then this one is the Sable Flora of Onsteora, and I made different um, different patterns again. And what I do <clears throat> is I add a little loop at the end. And so I, how I do that is I just double it over. And then the, uh, the amount that I need, I make double and then double, you know, bend it. And that way it can hang wherever they're gonna pin it to. So if they have it and they wanna hang it, they can put it that way. Um, but that's just, those are the ones that I've done so far. And then, 
I haven't finished this one yet, but, and then for fun, um, I wanted to come up with some, maybe even to be able to give out as large S. So I made this, well, someone challenged me to do this one. So I made, um, this is at like a checkerboard and may, and then also I made, um, the Namron, uh, tornado or swoosh. So those are just storm. Some fun. <laughs> huh? storm, storm. Yeah. My mind got kind of sidetracked when she just busted in my room. Sorry about that. Um, but I also wanted to go over like how I created those um, and just give you some tips. So what I've done is I have, I use either the square or the round disc and um, just to have, you know, just make sure you have like a measuring tape or if you're making it, if you, if you know how long I, I actually have, I actually have like notches in my little desk. So I know exactly how long things are, but that's what I chose to do. Um, some fun things that you can add. I mean, you don't have to, um, but you can also add something that they can hook it to. Um, I have not done that yet because I figured people might want to decide if they want to put that on there. So what I've decided to do is just add it to the bag and then they can choose if they want to have that. Um, I have a huge stack over here of some of the things that I, I buy, which is I... I, like I said, I love the satin reptile cord and I use one millimeter. It is my favorite. Um, I don't suggest buying it from a regular store. I suggest you um, either ordering it on Amazon or from an actual store. Amazon seems to be pretty reliable and pretty, um, you know, pretty inexpensive. So I just ordered all the colors that I would need and I ordered large bowls of it so I can make a lot. So for instance, like these both together, I think is like 200 yards. So it's enough to make a lot, but it's a great, you know, it's an, you know, if you know Kimahimo, uh, Kumahimo and you like working with, you know, with braiding, that's a really good opportunity um, for you to um, create some regalia that you can give as a form of um, service to the, to your barony or to your kingdom. And then I wanted to share my screen one more time, so I hope it works. And I hope I don't have any problems with it. So if you see here, um, everyone can see the screen. Hold on. All right, can you see the screen now? Okay, good. Um, so where, what I, when I pulled, I didn't know this, but when I pulled it up, I was like, wait a minute, that's braiding. So what they have here on these awards is you can go on to the um, on Siora web, uh, website and you can go to their award section and it has all the different awards and the colors and what they stand for. And so this was really exciting to me because look at all the different, I mean, some may not be as needed as much as others, but these are braids and you can easily, you know, create these and the colors that they need. And then you can, you know, you donate them to your kingdom, or if you have your baronies awards, you can donate them to your barony. So that would be, you know, that, so it was exciting. I was like, that's Kumihimo, that's braiding. I was really excited to see that, but it gives a description. And, and so if you see here, we have the um, Sable Sparrow and it's got colors and, um, and then, so one of the things that I discovered was when I made these is that the, the screen's a little bit too light. So we're going to get, but I did order a darker green, but I'm actually, this is it. When I ordered it, it still wasn't as dark as what I see on here. And so what I'm going to do is order, try to find that more of a hunter, darker like forest and work from there and see if I can find that. Um, that's the part about ordering um, the satin reptile cord because you don't get to see it up front. You don't get to see the color. Um, and then uh, another good thing too is, is if you have a, a friend or someone special that receives that, that is special to you that, you, that receives an award, um, one of the things that you can do is you can also use that, you know, make that for them and give it to them as a gift. So um, someone recently received their torsade and going to be their gift. 
So that's, you know, it's also fun for that too, is that you can also, you know, give gifts out to your friends. Um, now, as far as creating the patterns, and it's really easy. And uh, who has anyone here not done kumihimo at all? I'm sure you probably all have. But has anyone here not done braiding? No. Okay. So where I get some of these patterns from, especially the round ones, the flat ones, I kind of make up on my own. Um, I just use, um, except this one, I did get a pattern online for this one. I went to YouTube for this one. But on these round ones, you can just, what's really easy is you can just, Pinterest has um, a lot of round, round um, braid braids that you can find and um, you just play around with the colors. So I've gone on Pinterest, but I've also just actually gone on the Kumahimo um, friendship bracelet site and they have designs that you can find and I just changed the colors up. So if it's, if it's like this one wasn't exactly, you know, this color scheme and shh, hey, <laughs> sorry. Um, but what I've done is I, I thought, well, that would be really neat if there's a black stripe swirled down and then, you know, the red and the gold and go straight down. So it's friendshipbracelet.com. It's very easy to find. You can, it even has a generator where you can actually put the colors that you want and maybe the design that you want, and it'll let you design an actual round braid. And the simple thing about round braids is, and all of these round braids here were actually created with the same pattern. It's just color setup. So you would just play around with how you put your colors on there. But um, let me see if I, I did not set this up. So I should have, let's see if I have one. Sometimes I usually have a work of art waiting to finish. <laughs> I get tired of it and then I move on. Um, no, I don't have, but basically it's just the, you would put the colors where you want them. So between each dot for the smaller ones, it would just be eight cords and you would put, um, sorry, can you see that? Yeah, you would use eight cords. One, you would place one in between each dot. And then all you're going to do is just do your left down and you're right up and then turn the disc counterclockwise and do the same pattern all the way around until that braid is done. So it's very easy um, to actually create these braids and they actually turn out really pretty. And again, it's just placement. Um, do you think we have time? I mean, I, I can pull up the generator and see let me get out of this one and share my. Sure, we definitely have time. It's only um, 25 after, so. Sure, okay. Um. While you're pulling that up, I have a question about how long does it take you to make one braid, would you say? Um, so for the round braids, it's gonna take me an hour or less. It can sometimes take me 30 minutes. It really just um, depends on really the complex part of the braid. So now I will tell you that um, this braid here, this checkerboard braid <laughs> was very difficult. And once I got the hang of it and figured it out, but it really has a lot to do with tension when I was first making it the it was separating so the middle had a big gap in it so i had to really learn how to pull and um get the tension right for that to in order for that to work how um, long are you making those also sorry um so for these sprays um it just really depends but for normally i'm normally they are let's see about 30 inches okay that's 30 inches finish with the loop. Right, right. Um, okay, let me get back to my Zoom. And then I'm gonna just share my screen again. Okay, so I'm gonna 
share. Okay, there you go. So this is the gem, the friendship bracelet that um, I, you can go to now. When you when you go here, you really you want to go over um, to. Let's see. Go to Kumihima patterns, and there's already patterns on here that are already generated, and it'll tell you it's three, 16 strings, three colors, and then it will. If you click on it, it'll give you the setup. So that's your wheel. So on this one, it'll show you exactly where to place them. So if you look at your wheel, you're gonna start at the top, which would be the yellow, the black, and then you're on this one, it has 16 screen, um, strings. So you're gonna skip three and go to the four, and then you do red, red, and then continue on the wheel. That's the easiest way that, um, to do that. And then you can just look at your patterns. And if you don't want to do 24 screen, 40 strings, I mean, that can get quite complicated. Um, they have several that you can just look for. And the generate, I'm trying to see if I can find a smaller one. These are pretty complex ones. Oh, here's a 12 string. You could do that one. Twenty strings. Um, there is on Kumihimo. If you want to do large more of the strings, you can buy actually a large a disc that has more um, notches in it. I actually have a, I think a sixty four, if I'm correct. Um, I have not tried that one. There's a pokey ball braid that my <laughs> that my kids. Want. But here you go to the generator. If you click on the generator and it will give you um, the ability to go in here and add colors if you want um, and make your own design. I'm just playing around with it, but it, it gives you, um, and you can uh, actually make your patterns and then you could add strings. You can remove strings if you want to just do as a more simple, this is a really fun, you know, way to do it. You can also do your own pattern, put your own color set up and you can do it any way you want. <laughs> um, but it's just a fun um, website that you can go to. Um, now, I'm not sure if I can pull up Pinterest on this actual um, account that I'm on, but I'm gonna try. Yes. So. Um, can you see it or do I need this to share a new screen? Okay, so this is where I actually got the pumpkin. <laughs> can you see the pumpkin? I got the pumpkin. I've got it from here. And um, this is a fun little um, one that I've done. Here's the stripe. They've actually made it for Christmas, but they, all of these round, I call it the round wheel. I don't know if that's the proper way to call it, but that's what I call it, the wheel patterns. Um, you can find on Pinterest. And then you can just change the color up. If you like that pattern, then change the color and then you can, um, you know, make whatever design you want. And then, and so what happens is the more you click, <laughs> there's actually an ammo, but and here's the Pokeball that my kids want. So this is why I've had to order the larger disc. I mean, the more slot disc is because there's, I mean, it's got so many, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but there are so many resources out there and I just, you know, encourage you all to, um, if you want to make the regalia for, um, your, for the kingdom or for your barony and, you know, ask ahead of time from your barony what, what ones you can make. And then, okay, I'll fix it. Um, and then you, like this one I thought would be really neat right here. Um, I haven't tried it yet because it's got a lot of slots. It's got a lot of strings. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. But you can also um, do more basic strings here. Here's a simple one that's eight strands. Um, and that's just, that's how I get some of my information and, and, uh, and use. And then the last one I'd like to do is um, go to YouTube here and hopefully it will let me on. It will be friendly.
So Prumihimo is probably one of my favorite people to actually learn from. Um, and she goes from the very basic, like how to use a disc all the way to making more complex braids. Um, and so uh, let's see, I want to get to, so here she teaches you how to do a flat braid. Um, okay, I got my cursor from it. She teaches you how to do a flat braid that does a chevron. And I really like using her because, I, you know, learning from her because she's very slow. She has a British accent, which I think is fun. Or maybe in Australia, I don't know exactly. I think it's British, but she's very calm and she walks you through the process. So that's one place you can go to actually learn. Um, and it's Prumahimo, kind of like her name is Prumacon. And so she kind of combined that with Kumahimo. So it's Prumahimo. So I like that about her. And then the next one I like is, um, is CSL Designs. Now, um, she will also do a lot of wire weaving, Kumahimo, but she's... And I left my door. Okay, I'll fix your door in a minute. Look at it. Let me see. Um... There. So she'll teach you how to do um, a basic, you know, chevron braid, and she does all the rest. And she teaches you how to do flat braids. And um, so she's another good one. And I, I've had a couple of people suggest some um, different ones. This one I've done here, this um, also is not CSL Designs, but that flat braid Kumihimo bracelet tutorial that has the red and the gold. That one was really fun to do. So this, I, um, I suggest you just play with it. And, you know, that way you can make all these really fun braids. Um, and I'm gonna open it up to questions now. <laughs> I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, and you kind of alluded to it earlier, but you know, definitely good for awards, but also for, um, largesse too like you know just doing stuff in your baronies colors to give to your baron and baroness and then they can give those right. out stuff like that so really really cool thank you one of the things yeah. that i found myself doing during the pandemic i got myself involved in 100 days of sca service and in addition to weaving i've been making uh Kumihimo cords for future donation for the kingdom for awards that have medallions oh. so that they can be used as a necklace yeah for the crane or the comet things like that and I'm using embroidery floss for those yes yeah thank you I was gonna suggest I was gonna also talk about that thank you so much Sorsha um mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes yeah, so you embroidery I forgot to mention you don't have to just use that metal cord, but you can use other forms um, of threads. And so embroidery um, thread is also my bet. You know, I love that one. And so like you had said that you want you, what I've done is I actually did, I, I just started. I didn't, no one taught I me. Mean, I had one person taught me how to do the eight cord and no one, I mean, that was all they could do. And so I had to do a lot of research. So originally when I started making necklaces, I did not know, I don't know if you can see that or not. I did not know they made actual end caps. I'm gonna try to get it in the camera here. With already hooks on them for Kumahimo. I didn't know that. So I was buying them and then making my own <laughs> um, rings so I could connect them. But anyway, yes, you can, <clears throat> I need you to stop. Go sit down, sorry. Um, but I started realizing that I, you know, you could make, there's so much more to it. So I started buying <clears throat> the end caps and gluing them on. And then for the flat ones, I started buying Barbara. ribbon and um, basically, you know, adding those to the feeds. And Thanks. there are kits that are on, you can buy anywhere, but you can buy them on Amazon and you can get them in different colors. And the kits I like is because they come in, the, the ribbon class come in different sizes. 
and then you can get the um, the chain and the lobster claw or clasp. I call it the claw. Um, but also, it's really I mean, play around with it because there's um, different types of uh, the end caps that you can use. Like this one is pretty, I think, pretty interesting. And so um, that's been my new thing is just to, and you just, what you would do is just take your flat braid or, and you would glue it on the inside and the glue that I use, which was recommended from CSL designs, you might have one that you like the best, but it actually holds is the E600. So I use that and I put it in the, um, in the end cap and then I put the braid in there. And then prior to actually, um, Cutting the braid and, you know, if I make it, let's say I have, let me grab a round braid. So I have this round braid, right? And I've got, I want to put it in it's a necklace size and I want to put end caps on it. I've got to cut that, you know, those knots off. So what I do is I use, and you can use any, I mean, any kind of thread like this, but I just use the S lion. I use that thread and then I, um, I bind the bo bottom of it and I, mm -hmm. on both sides and I cut it. And then I put, that's when I glue them into the end caps. So that's another option that you can do. I don't know, Sorsha, how you do your, and do you do your end caps like this as well? Um, I haven't done the binding on them. I generally use the ribbon clamps and with the embroidery floss, the, the, the knot is relatively small. So I'll feed it into the clamp, crimp it down with my pliers, then cut the knot off and then add the, the hardware to it, the lobster claw and any jump rings that it needs, anything like that. Yeah, so I mean, it's simple. I mean, you don't have to do what I did and um, buy all the, the all the- With, you know, all the, with uh, the rat tail, I definitely would tie it off with some string or something because it is so much thicker than the embroidery floss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Lady Ophelia, did you know that there's another part of the awards page with uh, the College of Heralds, they also have the College of Scribes. And in the College of Scribes, they have actual pictures of the, the Kumihimo braids of the, the different patterns for the different awards uh, in a gallery. All you have to do is go when you go on the Amsiora thing, and, uh, the main Amsiora College of Heralds thing, the last choice on the ribbon information thing says College of Scribes. You click that, and it'll bring up the College of Scribes, and then you can see one the chart that shows what they need for awards, what braids they need, medallions and all that. And then they have a gallery, you click on the gallery and you can see, click on each um, award and see the actual Kumahimo braids that have been made. And that's a good um, base for what you wanna try with your braids. It's a good start. I do Kihimu too, and I've been looking at the awards and working on braids too. So you ought to check that out. So I have it up. T tell me again, really. The College okay. of Heralds, of Herald, where you have the awards and, and honors. Yes. Um, and then right at the top of the College of Heralds, you have. Uh, you might the share your screen, uh, yeah. Lady Ophelia, so she can see it. Yeah, I can show you. Okay, okay. see where it says College of Scribes? Yes. Click on that, and okay. you'll see what they have need of. And then if you go to Insignia, and click on the different awards, Awesome. And then you got the patterns, and it'll go up against the uh, the award pattern that they have on the awards page, and you can check the colors to make sure what you want that you're doing it or how you want to do it. Awesome. 
That's really good. You, <laughs> I said I didn't know that either. You learn something new every day. <laughs> well, I'm the Herald too, so <laughs> yes. I kind of look at this all the time, and it's a great way of just checking your work and say, okay, this is why I'm, I want to do it better work. And they have it for pretty much all the braided uh, awards and the uh, the uh, amidrus and non amidrus awards. Right. You, you can kind of work it out and see. You can see all kinds of patterns. The rat tail right there on the left, and then mm -hmm. the 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 rayon. And mm -hmm. you just go up against it and see what you how you want to do it. It makes a great example. Great. So, so that's another that's another uh resource for you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And it's and just so, helpful. Yeah, and it's exciting because even here there's different patterns. Like it's yeah. the same different patterns so that's exciting to know and the different types of medium that they use like yeah. they use rattel if they here it looks like they use kind of a a braided what do you call it twisty cord yeah uh, so they've also done used uh yarn yes the, the knitting yarn crochet yarn yes and you can get some of the crochet yarn is as thin as the uh, Sea of Ceylon uh, cord. So right. That way you can have some more idea of how you want to play with your, your Kumahimo for the awards. That right there is with yarn. Because I can, I can tell that. My mother's a crocheter. And then what's next is the rat tail. Right. So... It makes a great resource. So the one of the reasons why I guess I'm I like the Rattel is that when you're using it, um, it's it's very easy and it doesn't get tangled. So you yeah. can um, that's my that's why I like using it. But I do have bobbins, and you know I do have other. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a whole basket of. Um, uh, the cotton uh, embroidery thread. Yeah. Cotton Bobbins thread. are the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I was, you know, been able to, um, when I first started and, you know, and I, and I, and I like, and I like that we can all learn together and I'm glad that, you know, that Kat, you brought this up because I didn't know that was there. Yeah. Um, I just, I was searching on my own. I didn't realize there was a further way to oh, actually yeah. Great. So I'm really glad you came to this class because then I know that now, <laughs> you know, because I mean, you're, I mean, it's all trial and error, but I mean, I just think it's a wonderful opportunity if you have oh, yeah. that talent um, or the, you know, you want to learn how to do it to provide to the kingdom and I, or, into, or to your barony. And I, you know, I really like to share what I've learned so far and, um, I think maybe we should start our own uh, Facebook group. <laughs> Kumahima, Asti or Kumahima, you know, something, you know, so we can all share ideas because I just think it's just, yeah. I love from others. I am so totally down with that. I think that's an awesome idea. <laughs> well, I've done, uh, I've, I've done a Kumahima class myself. And in fact, I have a paper on Kumahima with bibliography. I just couldn't get it all. If I thought about it earlier, I would have gotten the uh, link and sent it to you. I'll send it to you later. But I have a whole bibliography of Kumihimo resources, uh, how-to books as well as art books and stuff. I also, in my mundane life, work in libraries. Oh, that's so nice. I, I can get lots of resources most people can't get a hold of. <laughs> Right. And Kat came to my class at um, Protectorate. So mm -hmm. I had a class. And so I did share some books. So, That's a good book. Uh, yeah, this one is one of my favorites. And so it's called yeah. uh, Twist, Turn, and Tie, 50 Japanese Kumihimo Braids, and Most Libraries Carry It. I don't know if you can see it down there. Most Libraries Carry It, and it is um, 
by Beth Kemp. And so the fun thing about this is that if you don't have your own disc, it comes with a disc. Um, the book is relatively inexpensive to purchase, but I love it because it, it walks you through like how to start a braid, how to bind a braid, how to, and then there's also Kumihimo, Felix, turn it down. There's also Kumihimo, um, be, you know, uh, beaded Kumihimo. I haven't started that. That's not really, <laughs> yeah. But it, this book is really nice because it shows you exactly the color setup, how to set it up, and then it walks you through how to do the moves. And then it also gives you the example of what the finished braid would be. So that's, I mean, there's, and this one's at the library, um, but I, my daughter yeah. knew that I loved it so much and I, I got library fines. <laughs> because I love it well, so much. And she got it for me. <laughs> uh, two other books have been written on. I don't know if you can see it. It might be backwards. This is by Jackie Carey. She's a big expert on Kumihimo. Yes. And she's got patterns Ooh. and directions. Let me see if I can put there. Yes. Yeah. And then the other one is Reginald Owen, who is an English Kumihimo. His book is this one. Yes. Yeah. 250 patterns. Let's see if I. And he'll have variations on the patterns. And this is for the flat, uh, flat pa plate. I but like he's that. He's got a lot. He's Can got a lot of variations. Can't you hear me? Yeah, so, yeah, we can oh. hear you. Oh, I was going to ask Kat if she wouldn't mind posting the name of the the title of the book and the sure um, and the name. I mean, and the author on the um this on the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the event would be good. Yeah, because oh, the okay. chat will be gone. I, well, um, or in the group either way. Yeah, I'll do. I can. I'll find my bibliography. Yeah. And I'll post that because yeah. I have it. I just couldn't get it up in time. But okay. I have a whole load of different really good books. Um, oddly enough, a lot of the English do a lot of Kumihimo. Hmm. Interesting. And they have books that they've done, the how-to books on Kumihimo because Jackie Carey and Reginald Owen are both English. Yeah. So, and I, I have a Jackie Carey book, but it's it's for the actual traditional the loom. So I have yeah, a book yeah. used, but this that, one is the, used for the mirror. That's dryer. your first book. This is a their yeah. advanced. Yeah. Because I well, have most one. of her books. <laughs> but mm. well, does anybody so, else have any questions? Mm. No. And thank you. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say thank you for your patience with the extra noise and the side thing. That's not normal, but you know, we're at home. It's kind of like at work too, you know, no I work worries. now and people, you know, we just have to, we, we just have to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Totally understandable. <laughs> we're all learning. Yes. Yeah. We're stuck at home. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you teaching and uh, everybody else for sharing what they know. So it's been a really great class. And uh, I guess if nobody has any other questions, we can go and take 10 minutes back of our evening. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having You're me. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.